I'm hearing more and more from developers about low-code tools for prototyping and building working systems. But how big can you really go with a low-code tool like Apex? Today I'm talking to Jessica Giddens, Senior Manager of Internal Tools and Solutions based in Oracle's Seattle office. Her team has built a number of systems that the company relies on. Welcome to the Apex App Creator Spotlight, Jessica. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, so this came about in a funny way. I think you saw the App Creator Spotlight videos and realized that you had a solution uh, within the company that you could tell us about. So tell us about ESP. What is it? Sure, absolutely. So ESP essentially is a one-stop shop. And it's for a one-stop shop for all things related to OCI's industry and regulatory compliance achievements and plans. It was a purpose-built tool to solve that fundamental problem that I think we've all faced, right? It's like, how and where do I get the information I need? Um, and how do I get it quickly? So we used Apex and thus ESP was born. Just to explain a few things. So this is Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and these are the compliance. Um, so, so just to back up a little bit, a customer has a compliance issue, like a bank or something like that? Sure. So um, not necessarily an issue. Um, our field team, that's our collective term for any team that directly interacts and engages with customers and partners, they will use it throughout the entire customer lifecycle. So from a pre-sales activity through the ongoing relationship management. And yes, one of the things that a customer will certainly ask for as part of pre-sales or even, you know, as they're going through annual evaluations internally is data validation information to back up um, Oracle's or OCI's compliance and security posture. We have four primary categories of resources available and one of them is the reports and collateral features. So this is very similar to a library um, users can browse all of the documents or they can filter in on a specific one. So when I look at this elevated support portal, it's beautiful looking. It's got the Redwood uh, style, which is mm -hmm. you know, Oracle's graphic design style and beautiful animations. And I'm assuming, yeah, this is all built in Apex. So can you talk about what the technical stack is? Sure, yeah. ESP uses very simple three-tier architecture. Um, Row requests are sent from the browser to the web server to the database. Um, we use the Oracle RAB stack, which is an inclusive technology stack based on three core components. That is the Oracle REST data services, Oracle Apex, of course, and then the Oracle database. Um, and a really key feature and benefit for this type of architecture for us is its ability to provide a full self-service automated application development platform. Yeah, it looks really beautiful. What kind of results are you getting? It gets a ton of use. ESP has a hundred, uh, an average of a hundred unique users per month. Um, and we have an average of 350 page hits per day. Wow. Um, yeah, totally. Um, like I said, um, the field, our field teams are the primary users and diving in a little bit more into the other categories. So there was like four primary categories I touched on reports and spiral. Um, the other one that is very useful is the FAQ feature. And this is a searchable library of hundreds of commonly asked question and answer pairs. So where this is really helpful is in with the customer is in the RFP stage, for example. You know, the field can come and they can search on keywords or they can filter down um, the FAQs to specific topics like business continuity or audit and assurance so they can hone in on the questions that they're looking for quickly. And then roadmaps. The field needs to be able to, to know what achievements we have made thus far um, and then what is coming down the pipeline. Right. And then do you also sort of tune what you're offering based on what you see people clicking on and, and things like that? Absolutely, actually that's a great question. So within APAC, because we are able to uh, not only have the built-in metrics on, on page clicks and things like that, we have the ability as admins to check the stats of what uh, content is getting hit the most, what questions, so we have features that allow users to say, this FAQ was helpful or it wasn't helpful. Um, we can see like if, if there's a if there's a document that, that gets a lot of downloads and, and what topic it's on, it just gives us a lot of insights 
into what pot and what's maybe not. And then we can tailor uh, specific collateral and content based on, on need to know topics or hot topics. And then also from a not perspective, it's helpful so we can kind of see where we may want to make some feature changes for enhancements. Yeah, that's cool. So, I mean, do you, do, you, do you have a sense of like what you've achieved by, by using Apex? Certainly. The results we've achieved, we've achieved span both from a user perspective as well as um, an administrative perspective. But we've definitely, over the last few years, so ESP essentially came out in 2016. And it's so because of all the work that the Apex product management and development teams have done, um, over the years, like it's allowed us to have new features and functionalities that we can provide to our customers. One of the most recent uh, changes that we made was that filtering feature that I was talking about in the FAQ, where we um, created categories. You know, we identified some of the some of the bigger topic categories that people are searching on, and so we made it a lot easier for them to strike, drill right down into it. Um, from the back end, from our administrative perspective, we have um, been able to build in a content approval workflows, and we have something, you know, some future enhancements coming up around some UX changes. So I, I want to wrap this up with a question for you because as I've covered Apex over the past few <laughs> years, I've seen the evolution of, of understanding of Apex as initially it was like, well, this is just this low code tool and it's just sort of an add on it's free. And then we started to, you know, I started to notice the, the, the rabid fandom that this tool has. And what I think is really interesting about what you do is that not only are you, you know, dealing with creating enterprise scale applications with apex, you're managing a team of apex developers. So if that's not a sign that this is a developer tool, I don't know what is, can you talk about what it's like to manage a team? doing Apex? Yeah, certainly. So I have four developers and two technical program managers. My technical program managers work with our customers throughout the development life cycle. Um, they are instrumental in capturing the customer's business requirements. And because of their familiarity with Apex and its capabilities, they're able to consult with our customers and provide options and solutions to help them solve their business problems. Um, and then, of course, yes, they work with our our developers um, from you know turning discovery and design into reality. Uh, and yeah, kind of as you implied earlier, you know, Apex developers are a bit of a niche group, and it's definitely been to our organization's advantage to have them as part of our team. We have two senior developers, uh, one of whom is the original developer for ESP. And I have two postgraduate uh, developers who have really embraced Apex. Uh, I and mean, collectively, you know, the whole development team has really taken advantage of Apex's features and functionality uh, to develop some really cool and complex tools with some deep integrations to external applications like Jira. Um, and, you know, yet because of the simplicity of Apex, the team can deliver on a shorter timeline without compromising value. Well, that's fantastic. Well, it's been such a pleasure speaking with you, Jessica, and I wish you and your team uh, the best of luck. I know this isn't even the only product that you, you guys build with Apex. That closes another edition of the Apex App Creator Spotlight. Thank you so much. Thank you.